Meredith Belbin set out to understand what it is that makes management teams either succeed or fail. And the tools he developed to help us to understand that are the nine Belbin team roles and the Belbin team role profile that allows us to establish what our preferences are. Meredith Belbin conducted a long series of experiments with managers at the Administrative Staff College, now Henley Management College, and he was working with a number of co-researchers, Bill Harston, Gene Fisher and Roger Mottram. They set large numbers of managerial teams of different sizes, a range of different exercises and games to work on. They also subjected the participants to psychometric evaluations and observed all of their behaviours in the team situations scrupulously. Belbin documented the conclusions in his classic 1981 book, Management Teams, Why They Succeed and Fail. Since then, it's remained in print, but he's also written a number of other books, including the best-selling Team Roles at Work. Belbin's fundamental finding is simple. Teams do not succeed or fail based on the individuals within them, but on the strengths of the team overall. Individuals bring to the team a mixture of ideas, personalities, experience, expertise, styles and skills. But it's the mix itself that matters. Among the findings was that if the team is too large or too small, it is likely to fail. They found that a team of around five people is the perfect number. Second, in successful teams, people play a variety of different roles. This is how we square the ideal number of five members of team with the need to meet all of the nine Belbin team roles within the breadth of that team. As a result, where all nine roles are represented within the team in one way or another, the team is likely to succeed. But if there are significant gaps, or indeed too many people trying to play the same role, then it is likely to fail. And finally, it's worth reiterating that Belbin and his colleagues were studying managerial teams. I'm not qualified to assess whether there is any evidence that his findings translate into other forms of teams. Out of this research, Belbin was able to articulate eight team roles that people played within these managerial teams and in subsequent work he added a ninth team role. So we now have nine Belbin team roles. We each have preferences for the kinds of roles we perform, but these are not psychometric preferences and they evolve as our career evolves. And we are equally able to swap into other roles should the needs of the team require it. So although we're less likely to swap into a role that is towards the lower end of our preference list, we will easily adopt other roles near the top of that list. Over the years, Belbin has modified the names of the roles, but I'm going to use the names that are currently in use. Three of the roles are socially adept. That is, they are favored by people who are good at relationships and enjoy working with people. The first of these is the coordinator role, which is a role often synonymous with that of the team leader. The coordinator role is very skilled at interpersonal relationships and is therefore able to identify and bring out the best skills from each team member, drawing the whole team together in a coherent whole. The team worker is also very adept at social interactions. Their primary role within the team is to bring harmony to the team, to bring cohesion and to smooth over difficulties. If there is any challenge to the team worker role, it's that they can be overly keen to smooth over difficulties. An effective coordinator will, however, ensure the constructive conflict allows different points of view to be heard in a productive and respectful manner. The final socially adept role is that of the resource investigator, and this is the person who is good at building relationships quickly and harnessing them. This is the sort of person who will have an address book full of contacts who they can tap into at any time. They're great at finding the resources that the team needs, whether they are people 
or access to materials and equipment through the relationships that they hold. The next set of three roles are the task focused roles. These are all about getting the job done. And the people who prefer these are perhaps more interested in the work itself than the relationships around it. The first of these roles is that of the shaper and the shaper is the person who likes to drive the team to get results. They have a very clear idea of how the team should perform and indeed what they should be aiming to do and tends to be quite didactic in the way they do this. The weakness of the shaper as a leader is that they are less inclined to involve other people in decisions, which the coordinator is, but the strength is that they can act quickly and decisively when needed. Another weakness of the shaper, however, is that once they get something started, they can quickly lose interest. But that's not a weakness shared by the implementer. The implementer role is the role that people adopt when they want to get things done. They want to roll their sleeves up and make progress. This is the role for people who are never happier than when they're doing something practical. And finally, within this set of task focused roles is the completer finisher. Shapers like starting something and implementers like doing stuff, but it's the completer finisher who likes to pay attention to the last little details. They are never happy until the job is done completely. They are great at dotting I's and crossing T's and focusing on the little details. The final set of three roles are more cerebral and they focus more on thinking than doing or on relationships. The first of these is the plant. This is the ideas person, the highly creative individual that is great at coming up with new ideas about linking different things that are being talked about and innovating. And whilst many of their ideas may be off the wall and not all of them will be practical, they are the source of inspiration when the team needs to solve problems or look at a decision in a new way. A great comparison between the shaper and coordinator styles of leadership is that the shaper can quickly crush the delicate plant who is coming up with new ideas when they become frustrated and impatient, whereas the coordinator is good at managing and harvesting those ideas. Because the plant is the source of so many ideas, it's the role of the monitor evaluator to test those ideas out. When the implementer is making rapid progress, it is the monitor evaluator who holds them in check and tests the work out. This is the role that is fundamentally about risk management. The monitor evaluator is happy creating an evaluation framework and holding ideas and products and services to account against that framework. And the final cerebral ideas based team role is that of the specialist. And the specialist is someone who has a great deal of expertise in one area and their happiest team role is one where they are able to exercise their expertise. Belbin and the Belbin organization have created a whole range of tools to help us evaluate our team role preferences, both at the individual level and at the team level and you can find them all at belbin.com. And by the way, I have no affiliation with the organization, except that I have used their tools, both in consulting and project management, in a real world environment, and as a trainer to support teams who need development. It's important to remember that the Belbin tools are not psychometric in nature. They change through a person's lifetime and they should never be used either for recruitment or evaluation purposes. If you're thinking of using Belbin team role profiles to help you promote people or to help you hire people, don't. If, however, you have a team that isn't functioning well, then that's the perfect use for them to understand where the gaps and overlaps are and to help the team figure out how to fill the gaps and deal with the conflicts that the overlaps create. When you're using Belbin profiles, do not be surprised by the results. You will find a wide variety of different results from people who have one single strong preference and all other team roles are low down in their preference lists to people who have two or even three equal preferences right the way to people who have no clear preference and are 
flexible as to how they operate. Everybody is different, and of course, at the time you do the test, they may be in a very different situation to the one they were in six months ago, three months ago, or even a week ago, when you formed your expectations about how they may or may not perform on the team role evaluation. And it's also important to know that there is no right and wrong. You don't pass the team role evaluation or fail it. The results are just helpful for understanding the individual and how they fit into the team. And of course, just because I have three main preferences and I'm not that keen on other team roles, it doesn't mean that I can't be flexible and adopt those team roles if the team needs that of me and I am prepared to adapt myself to the needs of the team. Other team role models have emerged and we'll be looking at the Margerison McCann model in another video. But without a doubt, the Belbin team roles model is the most widely known and most widely used, certainly in the areas where I have worked. Although some of Belbin's later ideas have been somewhat esoteric and less relevant to management, his team role ideas have stood the test of time. And the tools that the company produces are excellent. I would recommend that any team manager or team leader has a good working understanding of the principles of the Belbin team roles so that you can use the ideas, if not the tools, to evaluate your team and to make improvements to the way it performs. Please do give us a like if you've enjoyed this video. There'll be loads more great management courses content to come, so please do subscribe to our channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning.